There is a halt in hostility regarding the showdown between organized labor and the federal government, and that's over the vexed issue of new national minimum wage. Nigerians can now heave a temporary sigh of relief as the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, suspended its two-day old strike for one week. This followed the federal government's agreement to offer a new minimum wage higher than its initial offer of 60,000 naira. This agreement was reached after a joint meeting on Monday. The federal government is expected to resume talks with organized labor to continue negotiations for a new national minimum wage. Let's share the story of the signing of the agreement by TVC News' Joki Adisa with you. Nigeria's economy came to a standstill as organized labor makes real its threat to begin an indefinite strike. This intervention meeting by the federal government, which lasted for over five hours, shows signs of a fruitful outcome as government representatives and labor leaders appear to be on the same page. The leader of the federal government delegation and secretary to the government of the federation, Judge Akume, reads out a communique signed by both parties. He says President Bola Tinubu is committed to giving a minimum wage that is more than the 60,000 Naira earlier proposed. Just also agreed that all state governors will be carried along to ensure compliance. His Excellency Bola Tinubu GCFR is committed to a national minimum wage that is higher than 60,000. The tripartite committee is to meet every day for the next one week with a view to arriving at an agreeable national minimum wage. Labour leaders say they will have to return to their organs to report progress for a likely suspension of the strike. The appropriate organs are the only people that can suspend the strike, not these people standing here. So when we take all these things to the organs, if they so decide, it will be suspended. You could see that in the agreement, uh, there's a commitment that they will do much more than, I mean, higher than the 60,000, using the exact words in the agreement. The Minister of Information and National Orientation and his labor and employment counterpart said the country's lost just one day of the national industrial action cannot be quantified. Labor had agreed to come back to negotiating uh, table with the understanding that um, the president has been reached and is committed to uh, making sure that the new minimum wage negotiation is concluded. We can't stop a nation uh, from moving uh, for 24 hours or for 12 hours and think that uh, everything will become uh, will be normal. I think the, the, the loss is, uh, is not quantifiable uh, for, for now, but I do also know that we need to recover. 24 hours of a nationwide strike and the nation is counting its losses. But the federal government has moved to avert further laws. And the assurance at the end of this meeting is that Nigerian workers will have a new and acceptable minimum wage in the next one week. Joke Edsa, TVC News, Abuja. Well, Organized Labor says it has now relaxed that strike for one week, you know, hoping that at the end of that period, a negotiation would be completed and would have a new national minimum wage. Jide, what do you make of uh, this going on? This is um, it's a piece of good news. We expected them to return to the negotiation table. That is what we've agreed to do now. A strike so early into the negotiation is undesirable. The ideal thing is what Labour has agreed to do. Continue the negotiation. Let's see where the negotiation takes us. Not to throw the whole nation into an industrial action. And um, Labour has to be flexible. Nobody can pay 494000 It's not going to happen. The president represents the 
federal government and the federating uh, states in our country. But we must tell ourselves the truth. That even if the federal government is capable of paying a particular sum, how about the states? Have we turned minimum wage to a big joke or a farce whereby we simply declare minimum wage and it's not enforceable, it's not sustainable, it's not affordable. We got to think about that because the law ought to be complied with. But what we see is a situation in which some states have not even paid 18,000 minimum wage, as we speak. I mean 18 or 13? 18, 18. I know what I'm talking about. 18. Many states have not paid 30,000. So the minimum wage that was um, 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 instituted in 2011, some states are still struggling to pay. Many states have not paid 30,000 as minimum wage. We want them to pay 494. That's, that's a big joke. Well, joke organized, labor too says, far. organized labor says this is based on indices. Which? Market prices, hiking electricity tariff, and you know, all of those points that they just brought together. See, let's just tell ourselves the truth. You have to also look at, I think some people assume that our country is so rich. Ajero, as president of Nigeria, cannot pay a minimum wage of 494000 If he runs an enterprise of his own, maybe it's a business, he does some business on the sidelines, side he cannot pay a minimum wage of 494000 I know. I, I don't believe in deceiving myself. Myself. How did they arrive at 494,000 as minimum wage? Initially, they were even talking about 600. 615. So, the point that I'm making is minimum wage moving from 30,000 to maybe some, something in the region of 100,000 or a little more is desirable. I want to see that happen. I have people who, who will benefit if that happens. So, but we have to be reasonable. And I've seen what has happened in the last few days that showed to me a clear lack of reasonableness. A situation in which you go and shut down the national grid. See, I think that going forward, because it doesn't look like the NLC under Jero will still not go on strike. Under some administrations, we had very, very few nationwide strikes. But in one year, we've seen how many strikes Ajero has brought on our nation. Even when he was beaten up in Imo State, they caused a national strike to happen. And now what, what I'm saying now is, the National Security Advisor, Nuri Badu, will be failing in his responsibility or responsibilities as the National Security Advisor if he permits a shutdown of the national grid to happen again. He will be thoroughly incompetent as National Security How Advisor. How will that be prevented? Because workers there are members of organized labor and they tell you they have to obey directives from the national budget. No, no. It is irresponsible to shut down the national grid. It is unlawful to shut down the national grid. The Trade Union Act forbids it. The Trade Union Act is very clear. If we are not being led by the nose by people who have brushed aside law and order, there is nowhere in the world, and I challenge anybody to tell me, where in the world, in the name of strike, you shut down the national grid of a country. All right. I, I, no, no, don't, 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 I'm still on this point. In South Africa, I talked about South Africa yesterday. Let anybody fact check me. National, 
the, the electricity corporation of a country is tied to national security because so many things can go wrong when you shut down. Maybe in the past they did, they did this. A baton has been around for some time. You, you can recall that when some people tried it, they were jailed. National, the law is clear. It's clear. Look, I've done a lot of research. It, the law is clear. There is nowhere in our laws that you are permitted to go and shut down the national grid. And if people will keep shutting down the national grid, they deserve to go to jail. That's why I'm saying that. And to say that, they, they, uh, I mean, if, if you are in Egypt, for example, you go and shut down the national grid of Egypt or Rwanda, who, who can try that? Who can try that? No one. No one. You can't do it in the U.S. People go on strike in the U.S. South Africa is the strike capital of the world. They go on strike anytime they like. But when it comes to essential services, they dare not. So, so this is the thing. We can't have a situation where people will not know that there are limitations when it comes to going on strike. There are limitations. Some of my friends who even support labor, some of my friends who are based abroad who support labor, they've been telling me that that amounts to treason, high treason. It amounts to economic sabotage to go and shut down the national grid. They got away with it during President Buhari's time. And now they've done it again. That's only the second, uh, only the third time in our history that they've tried it. The first time they tried it, they were jailed. Because the law is very clear. If we have time, I will read out the sections of the law that deals specifically with essential services. You don't go there. Right. How do you explain going to hospitals to push people out that they should not work? They, they must not save lives. Because you want a, a, a minimum way. We are not saying that it is not desirable. We have asked for it before. But we cannot behave like in our country we are not governed by laws. No, we can't. And if Ribadu permits this to happen again, if we cannot put people to protect national security assets, if we cannot protect it, then it's not up to his job. All right. I say that with all seriousness. All right, Jidi. And thankfully, we have a lawyer who would also share you know, some legal perspectives with us on this matter. The national grid was shut down at about 2.19 a.m. Monday. This is uh, 6, I mean 5.13 p.m. It's still down, and the strike has been relaxed. So the promptness with which it was shut down isn't exactly effective. No, no, no the, the, the point is, it cannot... The pace You is, cannot, if you, when, when you shut down, mm -hmm. you can't expect it to come on immediately. That's why you look at even oil workers, oil workers, senior oil workers that are not permitted to go on strike. You know? Because once you do that, to then get it back, this is what they've thrown us into. It's not as if, oh, it's something you can switch on. No, no, no. It's not like that. All right, so let's get uh, to this view on this. Well, I think uh, I was very happy yesterday, around 12 noon, when I read the Attorney General of the Federation, reminding those people that what they have done is treasonable. And I was very happy that he can do that. Because a lot of Nigerians who are making comments on national issues, they are very ignorant of what they are saying. They are ignorant of the fact that some people were jailed 25 years towards the end of uh, Chagari's government because they shut down the national grid. The national grid is the national security of the country. And when you bring that the national security, like uh, MK Abela used to say, if you want to drink from a well, you don't urinate inside the well you are going to drink from. When you shut down the national grid, you have compromised the national security of the country. And when you compromise the national security of the country, you never know whether you are part of this people who will recover from that shutting down of the national security. To shut down the national grid means that every other avenue has been exploited. And yet, even during war time, you don't even stop food supply to people. Talk less of when I read that shut down the national grid, for what? Have they exhausted all available means towards negotiation? At the end of the day, they went back to the drawing board yesterday evening. So what came to my mind was that Probably these people meant more, more than there is a more to it that meets the eye. There's more to what the labor is doing. And like you just said, if the national security advisor had by the by the uh, attorney general of the federation failed to do anything about this. I read in the community yesterday evening that they were saying that the government should promise them that they will not do anything to those people no. who caught this strike. That is arrogant nonsense. Mm. We are not led by the nose in this country. And people should know that all of us here we are affected by whatever is happening in Nigeria today. So 
People should not be honestly emotional. And when they become too emotional by this thing, it means there is more political motive. I can say it with all sense of responsibility. Yes. There's a political motive behind shutting down a national grid because you are coming. What is the population? Now, at the last count, the, the, the number of federal civil service workers, there are about 1.7 million. And at the last audit, it was only 700,000 that was verified. Look at all the states. The, most, the state that employ more is Lagos State, maybe about 25,000. Multiply that by all the states of the Federation. Nigeria is about 220 million. The economy of this country is being sustained by the remaining 200 million of this particular country. When you not shut down that economy, how do you expect those people to breathe? Mm. And no fully like you said, that it's not easy to shut down a national grid and to reactivate it back. It's yes. like pumping somebody who has a low sugar to high sugar. It's very, it's very, very difficult. But somebody high, far, has high, you can bring it down. So for what these people have done, they have demonstrated that they are not patriotic Nigerians. And I think all organizations should look very well at those people that they elect to come and lead them at any point in time. Because when you have a national crisis like this, you know those people who are patriotic about the country. Mm -hmm. What they have done by shutting down the national grid is a compromise of the national security system. And it's a challenge. This is not politics. This is pure common sense. Yes, negotiations are still. And I will encourage the federal government to keep the doors open, to continue negotiating with them. But to any, for anybody who, who should think that Nigeria can afford 494,000, it's like returning us to Zimbabwe, where they use baskets to carry money. <laughs> Only this month, the uh, NAPC was able to reach 1.9 million barriers per day. OPEC gave us 2.5 million barriers per day. Mm -hmm. As I, last year, we cannot even meet it. So if you cannot meet 2.5 million barriers per day, there's no way we can earn enough money to even service our debt and to service our country. And now you know went ahead and shut down the national grid. Where are they going they to They even went to the seaports. Seaport and the yes. stores. Ah, don't they don't these things are hard off. This, this, is, this is unreasonable. Ah. For how many people? This is unreasonable. We are all affected, yes. And African civil servants can have families. But to say that if you are not paying 494,000 naira, I think they, they are talking from the moon. Mm -hmm. And I think they, it, it, they mean more than what they are saying. And they, there's an ulterior motive for going the extra mile in shutting down the national. A country that can shut down the, even in a situation of war eh, that is extreme, don't, don't take certain extreme steps that will undermine the national security of the country. I think they have done that. And right. they have shot themselves in defeat. And you know, it affected virtually every Everything. sector of the economy, even yes. education. Students who were writing, uh, you know, WASCE, the West uh, Africa Senior yes, 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 Examination. Were, were, yeah, some of them were unable to write. And so you wonder how they are able to, you know, get back to maybe receive the exam because no, no, going on no, no, across. No, no, no. You, they, how do they receive the West uh, Africa sub region. That they are doing simultaneously yes. uh, in different countries. Right. You know, the, law, the law is clear. Yes, she did that talking about essential services hmm? let me read no person that is trade the trade union acts uh, section 43 1a no person shall, shall subject any other person to any kind of constraint or restriction of his personal freedom in the course of persuasion 1b says no trade union or registered federation of the trade unions or any member that shall in the course of any strike action compel any person who is not a member of his union to join any strike. Even that one, they breach that one. The tampering, uh, miscellaneous offenses act. Tampering with electric plants, works, etc. Any person who unlawfully disconnects, removes, damages, tampers, meddles with, or in any way whatsoever, interferes with any plant, works, cables, wire, or assembly of wires, designed or used for, tr tr for transforming or converting electricity, shall be guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to be sentenced to imprisonment for life. 10. Any person who unlawfully disconnects, removes, damages, tampers, meddles with, or in any way whatsoever, interferes with any electric fittings, meters, or any appliances used for generating Transforming, converting, conveyancing, supplying, or selling electricity shall be guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term of not exceeding 21 years. Um, there are other areas that they shouldn't have gone to that they went to. Essential services, even CBN staff. You can't compare CBN staff to join your strike. They are part of essential service. 
those who work in security printing and minting uh, company, they are also deemed to be part of essential service, just like hospitals. But we have a situation in which people went sweet off the national grid and recorded themselves. That is high treason. And again, I'm saying that, look, because we know the strike will not end, they will still find a way to go on strike. If they go, if they switch off the national grid again, and know the battle is there, you can't call the security agents to secure our national asset. Then he knows, he knows that it's not up to his job. I do not expect this to happen again, because it will now show that oh, we have laws, but people, some people are bigger than our laws. Ajero or anybody for that matter is not bigger than the laws of our country. The laws of our country are meant to be obeyed. When they're on strike, there's no country in the world where they strike like South Africa. When they go on strike, they know that essential services must go on. And what they've designed is when there's disputes in respect of essential services in South Africa, they are dealt with by arbitration so that they can be speedily resolved because they don't want a situation in which People on essential services will then go on strike. Mm -hmm. So, whatever we have to do, there are lessons from this. And the lesson is nobody, nobody again, nobody should be permitted, allowed to get close to switching off the national grid. I'm not saying don't go on strike. Go on strike. I'm not saying don't ask for any more wage that is uh, uh, far bigger than what you have now. I support it. But know your boundary, know your limitations. Because if we permit this sort of thing to happen, then we are a country, we are, we are, we are moving into the obesian state of nature. Okay. Where people can do what they like and get away with it. We can't run a country in that manner. We are government will fold his arms and watch people do things that the law says they should not do. No, we can't have that. We can't have that. People can behave just the way they like because they are unionists. So we keep our national grid, we now put it in the hands of unionists who can come at any time and switch off because they got away with it under President Buhari. We saw Osho Mole do strikes in this country. I've known Osho Mole as, 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 as a, a union leader in Arewa Tex, in Kaduna, where I started my career. Somalia rose to become the president of the NLC. He fought Obasanjo on some occasions. You can accuse him that oh, he was chumming with them later on. But he led this country to successful national strikes. But he never went as far as switching off the national grid. Let people fact check me. And you cannot say oh, Somalia is not stubborn. You can't. See, tomorrow he remains a stubborn person. But stubbornness, especially when you want to atta uh, uh, attain a goal, must be aligned with common sense. Not to wage a war against your country because you want more money. No. You can abuse me all they like. But let them tell me one country, whether it's in America, where we regard as the, the kings of democracy, we are somebody who have the audacity to go and switch off the national grid, so those even at state level. Mm, so those limitations need not just to be in our law books. Now this they must be, they must be obeyed. obeyed. They must be obeyed, they obeyed. They and they were obeyed in the past. Be. And they must be enforced. They must they be enforced. Be enforced. Be enforced. Be bigger than Nigeria. Huh? Do you think that if no rebadu put soldiers there, gun thirty soldier, if we put soldiers there, do you think they'll be able to do it? In the Osobo here, in Osobo here, the, yes. the control center, they were beating people up. Yeah, do you remember that at the meeting they had yesterday in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, the, Mr. Luku Ribado came, you know, with the retinue of, of course, statutory soldiers yes, and all yes. that, guarding him. And then the report on social media, organized labor spoke out that the place was being guarded by soldiers. If anything happened to the members, you know, you, you, uh, they you, should be you, held liable you, and all that. You, and there had to be clarification that these were just people guarding the NSA. You see, the problem is that is, most, uh, most, uh, most of, most, most of our, our, our people, Actually, you call us a journalist. Most of us act out of ignorance. Or either we are biased or we are mischievous. 
Because the National Security Advisor has every reason whatsoever to secure anywhere he is at any point in time. So when, when I read the comment that uh, NSC was saying that he went to TCN, the military people went to CCN to prevent them from doing You see, it's, it's unfortunate. It's because we have never made an excuse of anybody. And if you know that the country is in their economic street, you don't add to the problem of that particular country. And I think at this particular point in time, the mere fact that we are in crisis does not mean that we should not obey our law. The president, the attorney general, I was happy by what he said yesterday. And the National Security Advisor should enforce the law that was what as we contained no in more. the law of Nigeria. No more. This is arrant nonsense. It is no nonsense. more. Uh, can, can the president of NSC, can he pay for an night for night to his Megad? No. Not the can pay. That's why they pay for an night for night to their Megad. He will, not, he will not pay minimum wage of 494000 Can they pay for an night to their Megad, who is a, as an employee, or to their even driver? Can they pay for an night for night? You even know the implications. There is what we call consequential adjustment. Every time you do minimum wage, all the other people, minimum wage usually affect maybe uh, uh, plus or minus, yes, level one level to seven. seven, yes. All the other people, they will benefit because the, the government will ensure that They're you, fair. your pay, yeah, does not catch up with your bosses. bosses yes. So all, everybody right up to level 17, they will all have monies added so that their juniors will not catch up with them. And that also involves tons of money. So when people think that it's only the junior people that are affected, no, every time you increase minimum wage, everybody benefits. Everybody gets salary increase. Mm. It's just that they determine the percentage. Some will get maybe 5% raise, depending on how, uh, this, how high you are. Yeah. The higher you are, the lower the percentage that they will add to your listen. But even this one now, this one, because it's high, the consequential adjustments will be really huge. It will be massive. Right. We have to think of the implications. Are we, can we afford this? Then, are we pointing this to a joke? Whereby, okay, let's just give them. If the states don't pay, no problem. But the law says everybody must comply. Every employer of labor must, must comply. comply. We are moving into a realm now where people will just leave you. Okay, do the minimum wage. Maybe it is what I can afford that I can pay. Okay. Nigerian companies, they are gasping. Yes. Taxation yes. is killing yes. companies yes. in Nigeria. Yes. If they cannot even generate electricity, you know, for their businesses. Businesses are closing down. Okay. And you want private sector to pay yes. for yes. that. Yes. Yes. They say this is what they can pay. At the end of the day, maybe President Tinobu will succeed in bullying him. And maybe President Tinobu, okay, we'll do, we can do 100. If he does 100, those, uh, the See. private sector, they are not likely. Not likely. And, and you can not enforce it. How many people down. are you going to arrest? Mm -hmm. It's the duty of the labor minister to enforce it. All but right. how many labor ministers have successfully enforced minimum wage in our country? You know, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll definitely continue this conversation. And then we'll have Justice Ojena also join us on the program. Please stay with us.